It is a joy to welcome you to Central Christian Church. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Here are a few ways that you can be a part of the life of Central Christian Church in the coming weeks. First scripture today comes from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. While well, we are not announcing prayer requests at this time, out of a sense of privacy for members of our congregation, we are keeping our prayer chain and prayer concern list active. Please contact the church office if you would like to be added to those lists so we can update them. We know that there are always requests that go unspoken and unknown, here and with all God's children around the world. Please keep the needs of these without voice in your hearts throughout the week and just now as we go to God in prayer. Good and gracious God of promise and of hope, you have made the light to shine down upon us, separating us from the dark. You have covered us in your glory and given us hope in the promise of each sunrise. Your word is a beacon of light guiding us through each day and making visible that which would bring us harm. Your light shines through us to illuminate the world around us. Good and gracious God of forgiveness and compassion, forgive us when the fears of this world, physical and spiritual, emotional and financial, cover our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the needs of the world around us. Let us be the children of the light in an age of darkness. Forgive us when we prioritize our own needs over the needs of others, and forgive us when we judge people for doing the same. Let us be children of the light in the age of darkness. Forgive us when we try to reach our mind, and forgive us when we lean on our own understanding. Good and gracious God of reconciliation and homecoming, Thank you for the sun, moon, and stars to light our outside paths by day and by night. Thank you for the marvels of electricity that harness power to create light where there might be otherwise darkness. Thank you for the light of one candle, a source of hope and illumination in dark spaces. And thank you for the light of Christ, found in us and shining on us. Good, gracious, and giving God. We are drawn to the glow of your light, to your warmth, and to your comfort. 
Be with us now as we are unsure of our steps from day to day, and remind us of the hope we have for the future. Grant us wisdom and resilience, individually and as a community, that we would make good and faithful decisions, that we would not grow weary and falter, and that we would reflect your light in times of darkness. Oh God, let us shine. Let us be radiant, reflections of your light and glory, beacons of hope. Let us do all we say and do, following in the footsteps of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Climb up the mountain, children, for the day come before to stay. scripture this morning comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, because everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words today. We read part of the letter to the people in Ephesus this morning, and this is a book. This is a book that we should be reading and listening to as we go through this Lent season, and as we go through every Lent season. For in this time of Lent, we look at our lives. We look at how we are living. We look at what we are doing, and we ask the question, as a people of God, are we doing what we are called? 
to do. This is what the author was trying to get across to the Ephesians. To have them look back and ask, is this what we are supposed to be doing? Because the people of Ephesus, they're Gentiles. They were not Jews. They decided to follow Christ because of what they had heard, what they had felt in their own life, and because of all that they believed. They lived one way, but that was before. Before accepting Christ. That was before being washed in the water and of the Spirit. We remember last week, we saw Nicodemus go to Jesus, asking him how he was supposed to live, saying he knows that he is being sent by God. But what can I do, Jesus? But Nicodemus went to Christ under the cover of darkness. He traveled that light in and out of the shadows so that no one could see what he was doing. He was living in secret. And in Christ, he saw the light. He knew what he needed to, he knew that he needed to come out of the darkness and to live in this light. He knew he needed to change his life. And after meeting Jesus on that night in the Gospel of John, we see Nicodemus a couple more times. We see Nicodemus defend Jesus to the high priest. And we see him bring spices for his burial. All. In the light of day. And today, today in our letter, we are reminded of our past and instructed that we need to be doing better. For we are no longer in darkness, but now in the light of the Lord. We no longer hide in secrecy, but we live our lives amongst one another in the light of Christ. We are called to live as the light. And in verse 9, it says to us, For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Our lives are to be lived in all that is good and right and true. To expose all that is done in darkness. To show those in the darkness what they are doing and let them know that they are not following God's call to be children of light. To let others know that if you have been washed, then you are not to live in darkness. And that means that we need to come together as a community. We need to be one with one another. Because earlier in our letter, in Ephesians 4, verses 2 through 6, we hear these words. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. We are in this together. And when we come together, when we talk with each other, listen to one another in the spirit of love and the unity of God, we can let everything be exposed by the light and we can let everything become visible. Visible to us and visible to the world. Our light will shine for all to see. When we talk to each other, when we learn from one another, we find out what is pleasing to the Lord. In our Isaiah text earlier, we read this from chapter 60, verses 1 and verses 4. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord hath risen upon you. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. As the light comes to us and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us, 
we are all brought together, all in the unity of spirit, all one in God. This means that we are the light. This means that people are going to come to us to see the light, to understand the light. This is what it means to come into the light. This is what it means to live this life, not by yourself, to not act in secrecy, but to commune with all of the world, to not hide away in darkness because you are afraid. This is not what you accepted when you were washed in the water and in the spirit. We are here to be in community with one another. We are here to learn from one another. We might not always have the same views. We might not always agree with one another, but we try to work together. We try to find what is pleasing to the Lord. In civil discussion, in kind hearts towards one another. This is what our community is for. To come together in the love, to find all that is good, is right, and true, and to share it with all God's children. Things have changed a little bit for us since we last spoke in this manner. Springfield is now on a 30-day stay-at-home or shelter-in-place order. This is something that I have never gone through, and I'm not sure that there are many of us out there who have gone through something like this. But this means that for now, we will not be having our traditional service for some time. However, as I mentioned last time, this does not mean that we lock our doors, that we hunker down inside our house and refuse the outside world. This means that we find new ways to stay in community, new ways to learn from one another, new ways to keep the light shining in the darkest of places. As Reverend John Andrews used to say to the church all the time, and as I said earlier today, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. We are people of the light, and we will not let the light grow dim. We will learn in this time. We will learn in new ways to shine our lights for all the world to see. Central Christian Church is going to be looking into new ways that we can still come together and communion with one another. That we can still be a community with one another. And that we can still shine our light together. For when people look up, we will be there, showing them the light of Christ, the love of God for all people. But if you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas, please let us know. As we will not be in the office on a regular basis, we will be checking our emails constantly. And you can email me at Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, at centralchristianspringfield.org or you can email the office at, off at office at centralchristianspringfield.org Please, continue to check our website for new information and new ways that we can be in unity with one another as we are in unity with the Spirit. I urge you to stay safe. I urge you to stay healthy, but I also urge you to stay in touch to be in community with each other during these next 30 days. Not to hunker down by yourself. Not to live your life in secrecy and in darkness and in shadow. But know that in this time, we are still here for you and the world. That in this time, the love of Christ is still with us and the world. That in this time, we are still guided by the Spirit. And in this time, as all, the presence of God is among us, living in us, and acting through us. Let us go and shine for all the world to see. Amen.
we are called to love all the world. Today, we are not gathered within our sanctuary walls. There are no trays that are going to be passed around, but you still have the opportunities to give and to receive. You can mail in your offerings to the church, or you can go to our website and give your gifts electronically. In this video, there is a link that will show you how you can give through our website. Even in this time of uncertainty, as we sit in our homes separated from one another, we are still a part of God's family, and we still have a call to help those in need. Of help. This is our time. This is our time to show them what it means to walk in the light of Christ and in the love of God. And before we come and gather around this table together, a table that is big enough to see all who want to partake of the communion meal, if you'd like to get yourself something to use for this communion, this would be a good place to pause the video and go get what you need. It is okay. It is okay if you do not have the grape juice and the little crackers that we use in our sanctuary each and every week. Because what is important is the act of communion. What is important is that we remember the meaning of communion. We do this act together as one people in Christ. And we do this act to remember. To remember what it was that Jesus did for us. The sacrifice that was made on our behalf. And why that sacrifice was made. Because of love for all the world. No matter where communion is taken or with what or when it is taken. As long as we remember the love that this meal represents and these gifts that have been given to us, this meal will always, always have a special meaning in our lives. Now, we come together, ready to give as we have been given, ready to love as we have been loved. We come with hearts open, to give of ourselves as we receive the gifts that Christ has given to us. On the night when Jesus gathered with the disciples in the upper room, they shared meals together, 13 of them, including one who would betray him and one who would deny him. And still Jesus passed the loaf, and he broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup and poured it out. And said, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for all people everywhere. Drink freely from it and thirst no more. As we gather around this table, we share in communion with each other and with Christians around the world and across the ages. Let us now join together in prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for the gifts of these elements, the bread and the cup. Thank you that we are able to remember this time together and recommit ourselves to following in your path. Thank you for the communion that we share with all Christians everywhere in this celebration feast. As we receive these gifts, let us open our hearts and our minds to fully receive them and open our hearts and our minds to give back to you, to your service. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy, O God. Help us extend it to you, the people that are very near and dear to us, especially right now, with everyone we interact with. In your name we pray. Amen.
Our worship has ended so our service in God's world may begin again. Amen.